Now let's see how we can use HyperDBG for digital forensics and incident response. A lot of uh, HyperDBG features uh, might be used for this purpose. Here, HyperDBG provides an event forwarding mechanism, uh, which is designed to make a HyperDBG a tool for gathering, uh, gathering different logs and anal analyzing the system behavior. Event forwarding currently supports external sources like files, name, pipe, and TCP sockets. And a new command called output is added to the HyperDBG to create or access the remote resources. So if we want to use the event, event forwarding, we should all, we, we have to provide several steps uh, like first create a resource, then and for a second, uh, we should open the remote resource and then we can use this resource in all of the events. And at last, we should also consider closing the resource. Now, let's see how we can use this command. Let's just uh, perform this slide and then, then we will see an example. First, we will use output create and then we will specify a name for the input or an output resource in this example i choose my output name and then we specify the type of uh, a resource uh, in this example it's a file so if as, as is as it's a file uh, then we will specify the file name if it's a tcp connection or a tcp uh, socket connection then we will, after that we will specify the port address and the port also other resources available for example name pipe are also supported by hyperdbg you could also pass the results to to a to name pipe and after that we have to open the resource uh, we could not access to a closed resource and then we could use different events in HyperDBG. We could add an output argument to the events and specify the name of the resource that we previously created. We could also use uh, several sources or output sources. We could pass the result to the several sources. For example, we could pass it to a file while we are also passing it to a TCP connection or a name pipe resource. And when we finished, we should close it. And you should also consider that you cannot reopen the resource once it's closed. So let's see how we, we could use this feature in HyperDBG. I try to run HyperDBG in VMI mode here. command called output as its example we could uh, use output to create my output name again with this file name i want to just simply uh, move the results of an event to a simple file after that we could query about the resource as we can see here the uh, the output is uh, now not open so we could use output and open it then we should specify its name now if we query it again we will see that the resource is open after that we could use this resource in uh, different commands for example i will or i'll write a simple script which prints the system call uh, number And we will uh all, we will all, we will pass this resource to the uh, hyperdbg. Let let me see. It's uh, syntax is called output. Uh, output it uh, again to this resource. And now uh, whatever this is called gathers from the system is saved into this file. <clears throat> I, I I could just click
close, uh, clear the events here, you will see that it's no longer saved in the uh, output file. But if we just try to close uh, the output, Let's just see its name. Um, there's no event here. I will try to close this output. Ah, event, why I use event. Uh, it's called output, yeah. It's now closed. Let's see, it says that again. Now it indicates that it's closed. And if we see the file that we can see, we can see that system calls uh, are saved into this file. And this is a pretty useful feature that you can use in order to auto, uh, automate batch scripts and use these resources to gather different information from uh, from your system.